morning, Governor. How are we doing this morning? <laughs> How are you? Good, are you? You want me to hold that? I can hold that for you. Right, you okay. sure? You comfortable? Yeah, great. Governor, I'm going to talk very long. I want you to know. <laughs> Governor Cuomo, you again brought up the SAFE Act. You called those who voted for it heroes. But since its passage, we had the Sheriff's Association express some concerns about it, various and sundry county clerks expressing other concerns, entire county legislators asking the state to repeal it. Is there any room for tweaking this at all? Or in your mind, is it a done deal and this is the way it's going to be? The, um, the, I am a gun owner, so this is not about taking away anyone's gun, which I believe is one of the fears. I believe people think, well, uh, this is a slippery slope. Once government starts to act in terms of gun control, it's a slippery slope. Uh, so the first point is no one wants to take anyone's gun. I'm a gun owner. Uh, we understand the Second Amendment uh, fully. The flip side is this, that many people have lost their lives. Innocent children have lost their lives. The danger from these assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, when they get into the wrong hands, are inarguable. We want to keep these types of assault weapons, high-capacity magazines, out of the hands of criminals and mentally ill people. The question That's is, what this, is there any room Can I give you the answer? Well, can let me, I've let, heard this all, all right, before, but what a lot. Next question, Bob. Oh, oh, hey, you don't want to answer opponent. the question. There have been some who have said. No, you didn't let me answer the question. Is there any room to tweak this? Yes. Is this, there any, and where, well, me, and where, what might well, we then, do that? Where then you let me give you the answer. Sure, go ahead. Because I want people to understand the full context of the question, right? The, um, so that's the purpose of this law. I think when you talk about the political opposition, that it's a fear of what the law might lead to. And that fear is, uh, in, my, in my opinion, uh, wholly unfounded because the law doesn't do what people are afraid it might do. Uh, in terms of uh, tweaking the law, uh, anyone who's read the newspaper or follow the news knows that that's what we've been talking about from day one. The process on a lot of these laws has what's called the chapter amendment afterwards for technical corrections, <coughs> excuse me, technical corrections, uh, and I would anticipate technical corrections on this bill. Do you know what Next you question. The health component of this thing, there's been some talk out there that perhaps people would stay away from getting help because out of fear that the information would be shared and their guns would be taken away. The um, part of the law says uh, we want to have a de database uh, of people who are mentally ill because we want to keep guns away from people who are mentally ill or uh, people who are uh, have criminal records. Uh, in terms of uh, the mental health, if a mental health professional believes a person might imminently danger themselves and has a gun, they could report it to another mental health professional. Which means if a, a person is seeing a mental health professional and the mental health professional believes a person might hurt themselves, kill themselves, and they have a gun, uh, and that mental health professional believes they should act, then they would have the right to act. If they don't want to act, then they don't. So it's totally up to the mental health professional. Governor, no. Governor, could you? Um, uh, no, it's unclear. This law would allow them to, but um, uh, but still within the discretion of the mental health profession. So it's it's still the sanctity of that relationship it, and integrity of that relationship is attacked. Governor, Governor, how do you respond to um, IDAs across the state saying that your state sales tax exemption would kind of strip them of their powers of revitalizing and growing certain areas? Well, you know, we want to, um, you've heard in the presentation, focus on 80% of what we're trying to do is about bringing jobs and business back to the state. We have a number of programs that do that, and we also have to do it efficiently because these are tax dollars, and tax dollars are people's dollars, and I want to be careful how we spend the money. Uh, and IDAs are one of the state economic development agencies that can give tax benefits. Our proposal is about how do we uh, make sure they're coordinating and we're not wasting tax dollars. Because a lot of what we've been doing, in my opinion, is uh, different counties, different parts of the state compete with each other, and they give grants to move the same business from one side of the street to the other side of the street, or from one county to another county. And to me, that is not a wise use of tax dollars. I don't want to subsidize uh, a company to move within the state and just uh, um, uh, reside in a different locale. This is about creating new jobs uh, and giving new people opportunity. So 
our IDA proposal would reform what I believe is a lack of coordination uh, and waste in the program. But the point of the program, we are very aggressive about, which is the jobs. Last Governor, one, guys, we gotta Governor, get going. Hear, Bob. Governor, could you Governor, tell me, we're hearing that uh, you will not include a plan for a second Niagara Falls casino in your 30-day budget amendments. Has this changed, and do you now feel that that might not be a good idea for the city of Niagara Falls? What we've said uh, is, you're talking about the compact, Bob? Yes, but also there was a proposal for another second casino in the falls. Didn't hear you mention that today, and we're also hearing that that's not in your 30-day budget amendment. Well, the casinos, whether it's not in the 30-day budget amendment, uh, the issue of the casinos we're going to be doing all throughout the session. Uh, and what we've said is that in parts of the state where we have contractual agreements in good standing, we will honor those agreements, primarily with the Indian-run casinos. Uh, but the agreements have to be in good standing, which means the agreements have to be honored by both parties. Um, I don't want to be in a position where the state is honoring an agreement that is not honored by the other party. And that we will play out over the next few months. Governor, well, guys, you got the second million casino, million though. Though. I mean, that was one of your proposals before. We're apparently not hearing that from you now. Is, do you, are you, is the administration maybe backing off of that? Again? No, no, no. Everything is still on the table. We're talking to the legislature about it. Uh, and, you know, we're going back and forth with the legislature. They obviously have their own ideas, which is part of the fun of the process and uh, what they're supposed to, uh, uh, their role. Uh, so it is developing, but nothing is off the table. Governor, you guys, you go. any chance of uh, increasing the historic tax credit from $5 million to $12 million? Well, we included it, uh, and it's, there are a number of modifications that have been considered uh, mm -hmm. to the law as we go through it. I think it's a uh, good law. I think it works well for Buffalo. I want to see it continue, and we're considering in discussions with the legislature a number of uh, modifications to the law. Okay. One of the things we're talking about is increasing it. Do you, do you, really see, it? Do you see the day where it will be the $12 million cap? I'm sorry? Do you see the day where it could be the $12 million that uh, a lot of developers are asking for? Yeah, it is a good program. Uh, I understand the desire to raise the cap and how it could be the benefit. It's also uh, money, mm -hmm. and one thing we don't have on the state side is money. So it's a constant battle of good ideas and economic reality. Mm -hmm. A fundamental pledge on all of this is I'm not going to raise taxes. So we have to make all of these good ideas fit within the existing budget. And that's the constant pressure and the pressure on the tax credit. Go ahead. Go ahead. Last one, we got to go. For Buffalo, when did it become a 10-year plan and not a five-year plan? The plan is whatever works for Buffalo. You know, what the, what the Buffalo billion is really about is we want to invest in Buffalo. Uh, we believe in Buffalo. And uh, we have a fund to invest in Buffalo up to about a billion dollars. In whatever plan Buffalo develops, uh, it's not for us in Albany to sit there and say, this is the business you should be in and you should be attracting these businesses and run it this way. But we are open to whatever plan Buffalo comes up with on whatever schedule and timetable within reason. If they want to do it over five years, we'll do it over five years. If they come up with a configuration over 10 years, we'll do it over 10 years. If they want to do it over seven years, we'll do it over seven years. It's uh, the whole model is we defer to the actual specific plan that Buffalo comes up with and will invest in that plan up to a billion dollars within reason. If they said we want all billion in six months, that would be a problem. But as long as it is over time, some period of time, We'll make sure it works for Buffalo. And whatever business configurations uh, they construct. Governor, Governor on the uh, teachers' union uh, uh, lawsuit against the salary on the um, tax cap? Just generally? Generally, yes. Your reaction to the lawsuit the, against the tax cap? Look, the tax cap, the tax cap is one of the best things we've done in the past three years. And if you ask businessmen or homeowners uh, what's the best thing the state government has done in two years, they'll say the, the tax cap. The property taxes were killing New Yorkers. Uh, they were literally forcing people out of their homes, especially in upstate New York, which by percentage pays more property taxes than downstate New York. This is an upstate New York problem. So the property tax has stabilized the situation uh, and stopped uh, runaway growth. Tax cap still allows 2% uh, 
uh, growth without a supermajority. Supermajority can make it anything. The lawsuit by the teachers' union says, basically, if we could raise taxes more, we would have base better education. I don't believe that. We already have the most expensive education system in the country. We spend more for education than any other state, period. And we have one of the poorest education systems in the country. So we have the most expensive and one of the poorest performing. It's not money, because if it was money, we've been paying for the Cadillac of education, we don't have it. And the answer can't always be more money, more money, more money. So I am, we raised funding, 4% this year, which is a lot of money. Most people's salaries aren't going up 4%. 4% is a significant increase. But we also have to increase performance. That's what I'm working on. That's why teacher evaluation systems, what teachers are doing well, what teachers are not doing well. Because the answer isn't just throwing more money at the problem. New York learned that the hard way over decades. Governor, Thank you, guys. We got to go. Do support uh, Senator uh, Gallivan's uh, proposal to increase tax incentives to bring more film production to Western New York? The, uh, we have increased uh, the film production tax credit and post-production uh, credit has been working very well. It's definitely brought back more jobs to New York. Uh, the post-production credit has brought back more jobs to upstate New York. Uh, so we're very excited about that. Uh, would we like to expand it? Of course, but then it's the same conversation on the historic tax credit. These are all good ideas, but it's all money. And the, the fundamental bottom line for me is no new taxes. So we have to make these good ideas fit within the no new taxes budget. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks.